couple weeks ago, I made a video where I solved the uncrackable level one challenge from OWASP. Some people seem to like that video, and a few people even asked me to continue and go on to the rest of the uncrackable challenges. So in this video, I'm going to solve uncrackable level two. For anyone who may not have seen the first video, OWASP has a series of uncrackable apps, also known as the Crack Me's, and these are just a series of a bunch of mobile applications, mostly Android, but there are a couple iOS as well. And these are just used throughout their documentation showing how to test for a bunch of different vulnerabilities and things like that, but they make the binaries available for anyone to download for practice on their own time. In the first video, I solved uncrackable level one, and in this video, I'll be going after level two. And you can see over on my emulator that I've already installed uncrackable level two on my device. And if I try to launch it, root detected, this is unacceptable, the app is now going to exit. So we're seeing that same root detection that we saw in uncrackable level one, and we're going to bypass it the same way. Once again, I'm going to go to the Frida code share and I'm going to use Frida anti-root, which is what we used last time for level one. First, we need to run that little smoke test that we were in last time to get the package name of our app. So when we run that, we see uncrackable level two and the package name is owasp.mstg.uncrackable2. So when we get that command from the code share, we're going to run Frida dash dash code share, the name of the script that we're running from the code share dash F the package name, which we just looked up using that smoke test, and dash u because we are connected over ADB. And when we run that, we see that it bypassed all those root checks and it launched the app. And now we are no longer seeing that root detected error message that we got before. So now we see a very similar looking app that we saw in level one, where there's a secret string and we have an input box that we need to find the secret string and click verify. And if we just try to input a test string to see what it does and click verify, it says, nope, that's not it, try again. And once again, I'm gonna use JetX to decompile the APK so I can look through the source code and see if I can figure out what it's doing. So when I take a look at the main activity, we see here is the root detection check that we saw first. And here is the code where it's actually looking for that secret string. And we see that it is evaluating this m.a object so when we double click this, it takes us to this code check and it looks like it's doing something with a byte array. So this is probably gonna take a bit more reverse engineering than the level one challenge took because we can't just find the values in the source code using JetX. So just like with the uncrackable challenge level one, there are several different ways you can go about solving this. Again, they have multiple solutions on the OWASP website if you wanna look through some other people's solutions. But for my solution, I decided to use Ghidra to reverse engineer the APK and see if I could find something in the assembly code. I'll be honest, I don't have a ton of experience using Ghidra and I wouldn't say that reverse engineering and looking at the assembly code is really a strength of mine when it comes to this kind of stuff. But this seemed like a good opportunity to get some more practice with Ghidra, so I decided to go about it using this approach. So when I open up the APK in Ghidra, I see that there is this lib directory and that there are four different subdirectories based on the architecture. And each of those directories has a libfoo.so file in each of them. I don't think it really should matter which one of these you decide to open since they all should essentially be the same thing. It's just based on architecture. But the emulator that I'm running the app on is x86 architecture. So that's the one that I'm gonna open. So when I open up that libfoo file, and look over in the symbol tree on the left side and look under exports, I see Java SG Vantage Point Uncrackable 2 Code Check Bar. And if you remember, Code Check was that name that we saw back when we looked in JetX. So if we look over on the right side, we see this decompiled code. And if we read through it, we see this string compare. That sounds pretty promising considering this is going to be looking for a secret string and obviously it's going to compare what we put in in that input field with what the real string is. And we see that it's comparing it to this local 30. And if we scroll up a little bit, we see this variable local underscore 30. And if we just hover our mouse over that value, we see that it is a hex character D word and it corresponds to a character array of four bytes with N A H and then capital T. And like I said a minute ago, I'm nowhere near an expert on reading through assembly code and reverse engineering and all that kind of stuff. But from what I do know about how all these things work with like the stack and memory and all that, this is a 
essentially going to be pushing the string that's going to compare in reverse order. So if we take all of these hex characters and copy them into CyberChef, we should be able to do some manipulation to figure out what that string is. So if we put all those hex characters in our input field and then we do a from a hex in our recipe, it should print out the output. But you may realize that this looks like gibberish. It doesn't really make any sense. And I'm pretty sure that's related to how like the stack and everything works in memory. Again, not my strong suit, but I believe that we are going to need to reverse the order of these. And we could just manually copy and paste them to the reverse order. But CyberChef actually has a reverse operation that you can just drag into your recipe and it will do it for you. And we're going to reverse by line. And now it gives us this, which if you look at it for just a second, again, it might look like gibberish. But if we reverse it again by character, now it reads, thanks for all the fish. And if we go back to our Uncrackable Level 2 app, and we put in our secret string as thanks for all the fish and click verify success. This is the correct secret. So now I've solved uncrackable challenge level two, which I'll be honest was quite a bit more difficult than level one and involves some skills and using some tools that I'm much less comfortable with. But the entire point of these challenges is to learn and get exposed to different kinds of tools and techniques. So in that regard, it was fully successful for me at least. I don't think that I'm the person to teach anyone all the ins and outs of Ghidra because I have a lot of things in that area that I need to learn as well, but I was able to use it to get the solution to this challenge. I hope following my work through and seeing how I figured out the solution will help someone else get there as well, and that maybe they will learn how to use Ghidra or whatever other tool they want to use along the way. So now I've solved Uncrackable Level 1 and Level 2. If you like this, let me know and maybe I'll end up solving Level 3 as well. <laughs>